Hi, this is Mrs. Clark, and welcome to my video on an overview of using Venn diagrams. So we're going to take a look at Venn diagrams that use two circles, and then we're going to take a look at Venn diagrams that use three circles and talk about how, how Venn diagrams are used to organize information. <coughs> so first off, it says, a group of 12 first-year students in college were surveyed about which science course they were taking. So we've got chemistry in this circle, We've got biology in this circle. So we're going to go through these questions down here that are going to kind of explain how we organize information in a Venn diagram. It says, which students are taking chemistry? So if I'm looking at the Venn diagram, anyone who is in this circle is taking chemistry. <coughs> so chemistry would be student A, student B, student C, and student D. Which students are taking biology will be anyone in this purple circle, which will be student B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. So B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So a lot more students taking biology than chemistry. Which students are taking chemistry and biology? So when we see the word and, that means they're taking both at the same time. So we're looking at the students that are in this overlap area between both circles. So that's only students B, C, and D. The next question says, which students are taking biology and are not taking chemistry. So if you're taking chemistry, you're in the orange circle. So if you're taking biology and you're not taking chemistry, you're basically in the purple circle, but not in the orange circle. So if we think of what area that would be, it would kind of be this, this part here, but not including that overlap there. So just the green highlighted area. <coughs> so that would be E, F, G, H, I, J. Which students are taking chemistry or are taking biology? So this would mean one, the other, or both. So you could be taking just chemistry, you could be taking just biology, or you could be taking both at the same time. So people that are just taking chemistry are A, so they count. People that are taking just biology are E, F, G, H, I, J. But we also want to include the people that are taking both. So we have student A, we have both, which is B, C, and D. And then we have also the students that are taking just biology, which is E through J. <clears throat> so when you see or, you're looking at just taking chemistry, just taking biology, or taking both at the same time. So everybody in all of the circles. And the last question is, which students are not taking either science course? So not taking either science course. Means they're not taking chemistry and they're not taking biology. And you notice we have these K and L students that are on the outside of the circles, which means they're not in chemistry and they're not in biology, so they're not taking either one. So K and L. So that's how you read a Venn diagram with two circles. Then we can also have Venn diagrams with multiple circles, more than two. Sometimes three will look like this. You could have more than three. <coughs> they could be overlapping in different ways. But this is a traditional three circle Venn diagram. So so we're going to fill in the Venn diagram using this information. A group of 48 first year students in college were surveyed about which course they were taking. So first we have 18 students were taking advanced algebra. So this circle here represents advanced algebra. And we know that 18 students total were taking that class. So that means all three, oh sorry, our one, two, three, four of these sections total up to 18. So I can't really do anything with that yet but I know that the whole circle is going to be 18. 
26 students were taking statistics. So the same thing down here. This whole circle will be 26, but that's going to include this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. Two students were taking all three courses. So this is an important piece to start with. So I'm going to take these two students, and if they're taking all three courses, they're going to go in this section that all three circles overlap. So I'm going to put a two in there. So that shows two students were taking statistics, advanced algebra, and chemistry. Three students were taking chemistry and statistics, but not advanced algebra. So if these three students were taking chemistry and statistics, they would be where the overlap of chemistry and statistics are, but they're not taking advanced algebra, so they're not part of this group, but they're in this group. So we have three students here. <coughs> and then no one was taking only advanced algebra and chemistry. So advanced algebra and chemistry, where they overlap, we had no one here. So the number that represents no one would be zero. And six students that were taking advanced algebra were also taking statistics. So where they overlap is here, so that would get six. So these three statements here are all saying the same thing in different ways. They're telling you where two of the circles are overlapping. So now that we've used all of that information, we can go back here and say, if I know 18 students were taking advanced algebra, I know that this circle should total up to 18. But right now, I'm representing eight students between these two. So 6 plus 2 is 8. And if I know the total is supposed to be 18, I'm going to take 8 away from that. And I know there are 10 students left that haven't been shown. So those 10 students must be taking just advanced algebra because 10 and 6 and 2 and 0 all makes 18. I can take that same information about 26 students taking statistics, and I know this whole circle here should be totaling up to 26. Well, right now, I have 6 and 2 and 3 in that circle. So 6 plus 2 plus 3 is 11. And if the total is supposed to be 26, 26, Take away 11, I've got 15 left. So there are 15 students that are just taking statistics. So the last piece of the question that we have is at the bottom here. What is the probability that a student chosen at random from the survey was taking only chemistry? So we're missing this piece of information. That would be right there but I don't have any more information here that I haven't used, so I have to think of what else have they told me that I don't know. If I can figure out how many go here, then I can figure out the probability they're asking for. So the only piece that I didn't touch is up here, a group of 48 first-year students. So I know there are 48 students being represented in this Venn diagram, and whatever I have so far, we'll see what that totals up to. So I have 10, 6, 2, 0, 3, and 15. If I add all those up, 10 plus 6 plus 2 plus 0 plus 3 plus 15. We total all of those up. That's 36 students. So 36 students are being represented in these two circles. And if there's a total of 48, 48 minus 36 would be 12. So there's 12 students that haven't been shown anywhere yet, so those belong in this part of the circle. 12 students are taking only chemistry. So if I want the probability that a student chosen at random from the survey was taking only chemistry, I want these 12 students out of all the students that were taking the survey, which is these 48 students. So 12 out of 48 students are taking only chemistry. So 12 divided by 48 is 0 0.25, so there's our probability. If I want to use that uh, notation, P for probability, and in parentheses I can say chemistry, actually let me add only chemistry, equals 12 out of 48, which is 0.25. So you can take this paper, we can fold it in half. like this, and then glue it into your notebook. I would suggest folding it like this and just gluing this side and sticking it onto the next page in your notebook. Thanks for watching.